Hello and welcome to St Mary's Online. Allow me just to welcome a few people by name. Yuri, welcome to you and to Maggie and to Isla and to Arabella, Sarah, Kira and the Beals family. You are all very welcome. We're glad that you could be with us today. Uh, my name is Matt if we haven't met before and I'm one of the leaders at this church and I'm going to be um, running this morning's service. A little bit later on we have Kira um, leading worship which will be brilliant and then later we have three speakers. Uh, we've got Arabella, we've got Gervais and Malcolm Bubba McCarthy who is going to be speaking and then a chance for ministry at the end for those who want it over Zoom. So we're going to worship now and I'm going to just hand straight over to Kira and the band. Hello, super, super warm welcome to you. My name is Kira. I cannot tell you how pleased I am to be leading worship with you today. Um, such, such a privilege. Um, so why don't we open ourselves wherever we are and let's just, let's just receive um, from the I was really like a war for quite a long time then. I think you that you can tell me.
Okay, great. So just a few notices for this week. Um, first of all, um, as I said last week, uh, we are planning to relaunch a morning service um, coming up sometime in October. And I can now announce uh, that we will be relaunching on Sunday, the 18th of October at 11 a.m. I'm going to give you more information about this next week and also the um, option to book your tickets, your space um, to be there will also be available next Sunday as well. Now, with us um, opening up on Sundays back in the building, we suddenly need a lot more team than we have in the last six months as we've just been doing stuff online and so there are positions open for people who want to volunteer in all sorts of teams um, to keep the thing going as smoothly as possible. Uh, one area which I really want to draw your attention to is our kids work and Kirsten and Annabelle do an amazing job with the kids and we're looking for a few more members of our team to help us out on Sunday mornings for once a month. Uh, it involves um, playing games, engaging with the kids, having lots of fun, making it a safe place to explore questions of faith with young people and to learn the Bible with one another. We'd love you to join your team if you think you'd be any good at that. Um, there is no uh, required experience necessary for this role because we give you loads and loads of training. We support you the whole way. It's a brilliant team. If you want to do that, you can click the button in the chat or head to the notes page and email kirstein at stmarysLondon.com. Another area where we're looking for team to support what we're doing at the moment is in our um, editing and production team, the tech crew. And we're looking for people who can help put um, together our videos, which we do on Sunday mornings, uh, but also are just able to be there either on Sunday mornings or Sunday evenings um, to make sure what happens, happens. Uh, stuff goes on the screen, people to operate cameras, people who can do sound as well. And again, we're going to provide a full training. You'll always be working in a team, so you won't be on your own at any point, and we'll be there to support you the whole way. Um, again, you don't need too much experience for some of these roles. Some of them we would like a little bit of experience, but otherwise we're going to train you and make it as easy as possible. And that's what we're trying to do. So again, click the button in the chat if you think you could do that and help us out once a month. Um, students, you, uh, you're coming back. Students are back. Those of you who have made it back from the um, summer and all that's gone in the last term, it's starting this Tuesday. Um, Serene is our amazing students worker and she's going to be on Zoom and you're going to have a little sort of catch up and sort of uh, she's going to explain what's going to be happening this term. And really what's going to happen is that there's going to be Zoom one week and in the building another week. So we're starting on Zoom for this week. She's going to explain it. Please do rock up. It'll be there at 7.30 and you can find all the information from her. And finally, um, if you're joining us for our Sunday evening service next week, please book your tickets. Uh, we need to know who's coming so we can make it as COVID secure as possible and it helps with our planning. Uh, so again, please click the button in the chat. Uh, we're now going to take a really short break. Say hello to the people around you on WhatsApp and, uh, you know, or whoever. Uh, and while we do this, we're going to take a collection. And this is for regular members of the church to give to the life and work of the church. So if you're able to give at this time, we so appreciate everything that you can give. So I'm so excited to introduce our speakers uh, for today. We have Arabella, Gervais and Malcolm who are going to be preaching. Uh, they've each been given a question. In fact, I've given them the list of all the questions in the Gospels that Jesus asks and, uh, or is asked to him. And they um, are going to preach on that particular one. They've chosen the ones that they want to do. Um, these guys, um, for some of them, it's their first time preaching here at St. Mary's. And they've worked really hard crafting their talk and praying and discerning what they think God might be saying to them through this question. And I hope it's going to speak to you as well. And so. Can we all um, just join together, encourage them, uh, write in the chat, applaud them. I don't know if you can do the clap emoji uh, in the chat, but let's do that. Let's applaud them all the way. And let's um, come with expectation that God is going to speak to us through these people who prepared their talks. Over to Arabella.
Hello, I'm Arabella and I've been a member of St Mary's for a few years now, thankfully introduced by a fellow teacher, Rachel, who brought me along and invited me to her small group. She and I worked around the corner, so it was easy for her to walk with me to home on Tuesday nights. Thankfully, she was so right, and I was soon welcomed in and made to feel accepted. The worship, prayer and development of spiritual gifts was just what I needed. I now lead the Shepherd's Bush small group, and at the moment we're meeting weekly on Zoom and reading Rabbi Zacharias's book, Seeing Jesus from the East. Can you recall a time when life seemed really unfair? In January, if you can think back to life before COVID, I know, yeah, oh, offices, places we could go all the time, pop in. I was essentially made redundant. For those of you who've experienced the general shame and horror of being called into an office, presented with a fait accompli, you know the fallout is so tough. Our fragile ego is more than bruised. I felt truly sandbagged in this high sense of injustice. I walked out of that office in a complete daze, asking so many questions. God, why has this happened? I may never fully understand the situation, but I'm now resigned to the fact. When I was given the opportunity to think about Jesus' questions, this one hit me straight between the eyes. John's Gospel, chapter one. Jesus gets his first disciples. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? For those of you with a literary bent or wordsmiths, the rhetorical question is such a hook. It draws you in and I've so often instructed pupils in my English lessons to use the technique to capture the reader's attention. When that question hits you, what do you want? What are you thinking? Now, depending on the time of day, a coffee, more sleep, a party, an answer to prayer. Here we find ourselves at the start of John's Gospel. It opens with John the Baptist preparing the way. There is a stirring up, a sense of excitement, people returning to God. He has people excited, interested in his message, willing to be washed clean, even in the Jordan, and become connected to God. Then, stage left, appears Jesus. If you've ever seen a film version, or even my favourite claymation, The Miracle Maker, this is the moment where the holy light shines forth, music changes, and we behold the Son of God centre stage. Look, there is the Lamb of God, Jesus John announces. Beside him, he has a group of disciples. Two of them, believed to be Andrew and John, the author of this book, stand up and go to follow Jesus. And here's the best part. Jesus turns and asks him in verse 38, what do you want? We are, might be able to imagine this in a variety of tones. The hard edge voice behind a closed or barred door. The polite inquiry as you walk into a police station seeking help. A warm invitation from a parent bending down to their child's level. What do you want? What motives do these two have for following Jesus? What made them think, thanks John the Baptist for the water and teaching, uh, but we've now seen the real thing. Importantly, they were seeking God and open to the Spirit. First, they had encountered the wild man baptising people by the Jordan and joined his group. Amidst the insecurities of their time, crazy Herods, revenue demanding Romans, ferocious Jewish leaders, John's job was to point them to the long awaited Messiah, a rescuer, a saviour, someone who's going to come in and make it all better. What do you want? When I considered this question personally for me this week, the list was long. Mine is kicked off with security, love, acceptance, peace. You might be thinking, excellent, Arabella. All of these are freely given from God. Read the Gospels and see how. But if you borrowed a little deeper, my requests are built on my needs for acceptance and love from those around me. Financial security dependent on my actions. Amazing to think that sometimes I never seem to learn. Going back to January, it was a time where all my financial security Feelings of acceptance and achievements were torn away. The only constant was Jesus, God's voice, my prayerful friends, and revisiting God's promises that I had written down in my prayer diary. Fear hit me. I went away for three days on retreat, and at one point was lying on the floor, listening to worship music and weeping. I'd been totally crushed. The future was uncertain and scary. Essentially, I was crushed, but I wasn't alone. The Lord was present and reminding me of his call upon my life. God only asked for me to fix my eyes upon him. 
he would point out the safe steps for me to take, and I only need to take one step at a time. When Jesus turns to Andrew and John and asks them this question, they follow him. They don't wait or check or decide if it's worth it. They know that following Jesus is what they want. The testimonies that regularly share at the start of church about giving and financial provision always make me feel so excited and encouraged. I can see what happens when people say loudly, I want you, Lord. They know they are never going to be shortchanged. That list I mentioned earlier on, security, love, acceptance, peace, does come from Jesus, and I'm not wrong to ask. This week as I was planning this talk, someone who matters to me was quite critical. It was a proper gut punch and also made me feel so angry. Whether there is a kernel of truth or not, I was so upset because rejection from anyone is hideous. I was sharing this with my small group. They heard my cry and could see deeply, like Jesus, and pray for me. What do I want from Jesus? To be known and loved. Their prayers poured out God's healing spirit to help move me forwards and know that I'm not alone. I remember last year, Shadrach, our link pastor from Uganda, preaching from Psalm 119 verse 5. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. He said so beautifully, where God leads, that is the safe place to be. And I've been holding that so tightly for the last nine months. Where God leads, that is the safe place to be. When the road seems rocky, I just have to remind myself that I'm equipped and safe. The same goes for you. You are safe and you are equipped. That does not mean that I've totally managed to walk on from that original rejection from my old job. But I know what I want and where to seek it. Again, what do we want? If we answer today, I want you, Jesus, a relationship, a connection, your love, we get it all and more. At the end of Psalm 23, David sums it up. So, why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. David was not exempt from challenges, hardships, or difficulties. If I sat and chatted with him on a bench now, he would understand my original list. He suffered at the hands of his humanly desires. However, he could sing out this truth. He knew that we have no need to fear the future. When we take that heavenly perspective and say, all I want is you, Lord, we get his goodness, mercy, and love pursuing us. And it really is majestic. Hello St. Mary's, I'm so excited to be speaking to you today. My name is Gervais, I'm 16 years old, and I'd like to thank the, the team for allowing me to speak to you today. Um, today. Today's story is on Jesus walking on the water. And the question that we get from this is, why did you doubt? Which is the question that Jesus asks Peter of why he doubted that Jesus would help him. <clears throat> so the reason why I'm telling you this story today is, um, it's so because during this time we've been doubting God. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but um, this time has really been a time of doubt and insecurities and things like that. And this story really tr shows the love, the faithfulness and the mercy of Jesus. And also tells us the reason why we should not really doubt God in anything that he does. So I'm going to be reading from Matthew 14, verses um, 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. 
and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. So, um, before um, I let's talk to you about the, um, the verse, we have to get the context of it. So, um, before this, um, before this miracle, um, the disciples had just watched another miracle, which was um, the feeding of the 5,000. Um, and I'm not sure about you guys, um, it's probably the same for everyone really, but if you, I was to see Jesus feeding 5,000 people with like a little boy's lunch that he had given to him, that would confirm all belief for me that um, Jesus would never let anyone go hungry or let any of his believers go um, troubled. So, but we're human and we are imperfect and um, this is not the case. As demonstrated by Peter doubting Jesus, not once but twice during this, um, during this story that we see. Um, first he was asking if the figure was really Jesus and then he asked um, if he was able to get him out of the water and he doubted. After saving Peter, Jesus asked, why did you doubt? So why did we doubt? Why did he doubt um, Jesus? Um, often when we're given a instruction by Jesus or um, a way to go, our, usually our reaction is, okay, we're gonna f I'm going to follow Jesus during this time. I'm going to follow him, whatever he says. But then we see the troubles that comes out of this. We see the obstacles that Jesus is going to guide us through. We're going to see the um, troubles. We're going to see the storm. We're going to see the waves. We're going to see the wind. And often, like Peter, we'll turn away from this. We'll get scared and we'll begin to drown. Um, we'll doubt that Jesus will be able to guide us out of the water, maybe because um, we think we're not worthy enough to go through his plan. Maybe because we're not, we're not able if we're not sure if he's able to be able to have the power to get us out, or we're just not sure what we'll do afterwards. We don't even know if this is the plan that we want to go through. But Jesus is almighty, he's loving, and he's merciful. So among, uh, despite of this, despite of the doubt that is shown by him, he, he grabs Peter, Peter out of the water immediately after he asks for his help. Um, I like to guide you through a story or tell a story about when I needed um, Jesus and when my family needed Jesus' guidance. Um, during year six, when I was um, a, a child, um, 10 years old, we faced our first storm as a family. Um, and this was when my maternal grandma and paternal granddad um, were both diagnosed with terminal cancer at, um, within two days of each other. This was quite a turbulent time in our family um, and it really caused a lot of doubt within ourselves um, as a family, really distancing ourselves from God um, because we didn't believe that this is something that, you know, that would be in God's plan for us or God's guidance or within God's will even. So um, just having the prospect of losing two leading figures in our family really had us lost. To add to this, during the treatments that um, we were paying, uh, my family were paying for, my fa um, parents were paying for, um, it was, my sister was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, and as you know, this is quite, um, it's a, it's a troubling thing to see when such a young person has this, um, has a, this condition. Um, which was uncharted waters for us. So these things coming wave after wave um, really caused us as a family to feel lost, um, as I said, and doubting God too. So fast forward, um, um, sadly they both passed within the, the space of two years. And fast forward two years, um, another one of our grandparents, um, one, of my, one of my other grandparents had died um, and this was, yet again, 
one of these questioning times for us, but um, through this, we found as a family that um, we're able to stick together. And one of these moments that really encapsulates this is um, during 2018, um, the funeral for my maternal grandpa. Um, and I wasn't able, I wasn't sure if I was able to speak at it. Um, I wasn't sure if I was able to say the words that um, God was, you know, that was God-led, God-driven. And I remembered something that um, he had told me or he had demonstrated to me through his battles with, um, with um, old age and with kidney failure that he had, my maternal grandpa had. And this was um, to let God do his work through you and to let, give yourself up to him for him to do whatever he pleases through you. And this was, um, I ended up doing great um, and um, talking at the funeral and it was um, a touching moment for me and my family to see that um, God still had, it was like a renewal of hope for me especially because it's something that I've just taken and thrived with it which has allowed me the confidence to speak to you today. So um, through this story, um, it's even guiding me through to this year. Um, and this year has been turbulent too, like another wave, because God never said that waves would end. Um, so whether it was the, the death of Kobe Bryant in January or the pandemic leading to the, the abrupt ending of my school year, year 11, um, and my GCSE's grades, um, the uncertainty of that, as well as the injustices that have been, that black, the black community worldwide has been um, facing due to the um, shootings in the US. So as a response to this, I have found that all we have to do is to surrender our pain, sadness and frustrations, lament to him um, and focus on him throughout the storms because um, these um, injustices faced have been quite like waves. Um, Emmett Till, Fred Hampton, Stephen Lawrence here in the UK, Elijah McLean, uh, Khalif Browder, and now George Floyd along with Breonna Taylor. These people have not faced justice. Um, and through this, we can see that we can either look at the waves, we can either look at the injustice that we faced, or we can instead choose to look at Jesus and to let him guide us. And when, once we look at Jesus, we can see that he's already walking towards us, like he was walking towards G Peter in the story. And his hand is already out, ready to grab us out of the waters that we're facing today. And he's inviting us to the peace, the joy, and the light of his love once again. So with that, I'd like to thank you. say thank you for listening, um, and God bless. Hi guys, uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Bubba. Um, I'm a musician and producer, and I'm newly married to my incredible wife, Sarah. Uh, and I've been coming to St. Mary's for eight years, and uh, I've been a part of the worship team, and I'm currently a member on the PCC. So um, the scripture we're gonna look at today is uh, John 21, verse 23. Um, so Jesus has, resurrected from the dead and has already appeared to the disciples a few times and he's now walking with Peter and he's asking Peter, uh, Peter do you love me? And uh, Peter is saying yes Lord you know that I love you and it comes to this part where Jesus is telling Peter of his future and he's basically warning Peter that he will be persecuted later on in his life and um, so after hearing this Peter looks over his shoulder, first person he sees is John, one of uh, the other disciples, and he says to Jesus, Lord, what about him? And Jesus rebukes Peter and says, uh, what concern of it is yours? And that's the part of the scripture that we're gonna be focused on. Uh, so Peter was intruding into business that was no concern of his, uh, in the shock of learning that he would have to tread the pathway of rejection and suffering. His first reaction was to compare his path to John. Lord, will John suffer the same hardships as me? Lord, are you giving John preferential treatment? Because after all, he is the disciple that you love. 
Uh, in these stories, I'm always convicted to look at them and, and think about who I am in the story. And sometimes we often look at Peter and think, oh, he's, he's brash, uh, he's hasty, he's bad-tempered. Uh, but for me, it's a no-brainer here. I put myself in Peter's position. Uh, I constantly deflect onto other people and, and look at other people and think, Lord, um, they've got it all together. They've got this. They're so blessed. Um, why is that not happening to me? It's very easy to do that. It, and it causes us to lose like the love God has given us. And comparison means that we, we kind of can't give out the love that we want to give out all the Lord has given us. And that's quite challenging and our love becomes diluted and it causes our mind to be constricted and focused on what we don't have. Um, and it also leads to a lack of trust. You know, we start asking questions to God and start thinking, Lord, is this is your plan working? Um, when is it going to happen? Are you sure this is the right thing? And um, that's just not what God has called us to. Um, he wants us to be joyful and abundant. He wants us to keep our eyes on him and only him. So those things that I've mentioned don't have an effect on us. I um, was remembering when I first started out in the music industry and uh, I was looking at friends and other colleagues absolutely smashing it and going around the world touring with incredible artists. And, you know, I was finding my feet. I was doing everything for free. I was living with my parents. I had no money. So I was crying out to God and saying, Lord, you know, I'm so desperate to succeed. Please give me these opportunities. Um, you know, the same thing happened to me when I was uh, really wanting to get married and find someone to live with for the rest of my life. Um, saying, God, all my friends were getting hitched. Lord, why can't I find someone who loves me and I love them? Uh, I hate dating, so just give me someone. Um, you know, and with music, I remember the first kind of big opportunity I got um, this musical director called me and basically asked me to come and play with an artist. And a couple of months later, I asked him, how did you get my number? I, you know, I've never met you. Um, and it's weird like that in the music industry, normally it's word of mouth. And um, he said, oh, I'd seen you two years previously at a rehearsal. I'd popped in to see my friend for five minutes and I just remembered you. And, you know, that really stuck with me because I was like, okay, God doesn't have a one size fits all plan. Um, and, he, you know, you can't write that. You can't kind of make that happen. And the same thing happened with meeting my wife, Sarah. We kind of just, I was in New York for 24 hours and uh, we hit it off and the rest is history. And not to say that I still don't have problems with comparison. You know, Lord, why haven't I bought a house yet? Or things like that. Um, and it's a constant struggle and constant uh, tension. Um, but for me, it's trying to hold on to things that he has done and trying to remember those things. And God has given us different spiritual gifts, and different natural gifts, um, and created no one the same. We all know the proverb, run your own race. And it reminds us to keep focused on how we run the race, not focusing on those ahead or those that are behind. Um, we have to recognize that our race is our race. We might run out of energy at some points, um, but the great news is that we are not racing against anyone else. And it's, in our culture, it's so easy to feel like we need to have one up on the next person. We have, need to have that opportunity before that next person has it. Um, but God is just calling us to run our own race. You know, sometimes when we look at some of these passages um, and think about our own lives, it seems like God, God's actions seem to contradict our innate sense of fairness. And instead of faithfully carrying out our calling, we are tempted to look over our shoulder like Peter did. Now, the last couple of months, I've been rereading the Gospels and there is a certain uh, parable that stuck out to me, um, the parable of the workers in the vineyard. And so in this parable, there's a landowner. Um, early in the morning, he sees people standing outside and they're not working, so he hires them. And he does the same at nine o'clock, 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m. Um, and he's already agreed the fees beforehand. And so at the end of the day, he pays uh, everyone and everyone gets paid the same amount, one one denarius it is. And so the people that started early in the morning are like, you know, what's going on? We did more work than them, why are we getting paid the same? And the landowner says, didn't we agree the fee beforehand? Did I not have to, do I not have the right to do what I want with my money? You know, everyone has their own journey. 
and comparison can lead to jealousy and jealousy cripples our walk with Christ. Sometimes it may seem that we've been working our butt off to achieve something and someone comes along and seamlessly achieves it in half the time and we have to stay in our own lane. There's just two things that I want to recommend for us to like help stifle uh, comparison and that's one making God the biggest thing in our lives uh, centering everything around him and two just being grateful having gratitude and making notes of things that God has done um, so yeah that's it uh, I'm just going to pray quickly uh, and then we'll finish Lord thank you um, that you have you are an incredible God and you have ordained for us to run our own race and you have plans for us as it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, Lord, pray that you help us to stick to that and keep focused on you. And, and let us be excited about what you have for us and not about what's going on around us, Lord. Uh, so Lord, be with us as we uh, start this week in Jesus' name. Amen. My Jesus, you are the road on which my Three brilliant talks. Thank you so much, Arabella, Gervais and Malcolm for all of that amazing wisdom and insight and content. 
And I think it's right now that we um, respond to what God may be saying to us um, through those who brought those messages now. So why don't we um, do what we would normally do if we were in church. Let's open our hands as a sign of being open to God. And I would recommend that you close your eyes. I know that some of you, uh, you've got kids flying around the room right now, but as much as we possibly can, let's open ourselves to God uh, once again. So Lord, we just invite your Holy Spirit to come us, come and fill us. Would you meet us, Lord? And right now, wherever you are, why don't you begin um, to come with words and bring before God anything that you feel like he may be speaking to you about today? To me, there were a number of themes that seemed to run through those three talks. One, that God is pursuing us, that Jesus is walking over the waves that are going on in our lives, and he's coming towards us. Arabella said that his love is pursuing us, God is pursuing us. And the other thing was to keep our eyes fixed on him. So whether those talks spoke into our desires, our doubts, our fears, our ambitions, Jesus is walking towards us. He's bigger, he's greater, he's better. And I think there's a call for some of us to return to Jesus once again, to choose to fix our attention on him where we have become distracted by other things, looking over our shoulders, comparing ourselves with others. We've got to run our own race. The doubts and fears, everything that has come up this year, he is better. He is better. And so Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us right now? And would you renew in us uh, the knowledge of how amazing Jesus is? In your presence. I think for anybody, um, you may be sensing the Spirit coming upon you now. I just pray that you would ask for more more of your Holy Spirit. So we're going to draw our online service to a formal close now, but the ministry rooms will be open. You can click the button in the the chat if you'd like someone to pray uh, with you about any of these things that have come up during this talk or anything that's happened during the week as well. Uh, But otherwise, we look forward to seeing you online next week or in the building in the evening. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest on you and all who you love this day and evermore. Amen. Have a great week.